Hello there, YouTube. It's your boy B3. Back with another kicking. A grabbing nabber beer. Today, we are looking at Wonder Woman in Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour. This is the first crossover event of Justice League Dark, and it happens before the first volume is even finished. Really soon for a crossover event, I felt like, especially for a book spinning out of a line-wide event. So, nah. But, luckily, it is only two books. It's Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark crossing over, and I guess it kind of makes sense because Wonder Woman is the leader of this version of Justice League Dark. Let me read you the back of the book. It takes a god to stop a god. The shocking event that pitted Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark against the most ancient threat humanity has ever faced is collected in Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour. Long ago, Hecate, the goddess of magic, stole the powers of other mystic entities and hid them in Earth beings called the Witchmarked. In every generation, Hecate has designated new keepers of these powers, all unaware of their burden. Now the original owners of these powers have returned, and Hecate must awaken today's Witchmarked. Among them, Wonder Woman. Allied with Justice League Dark, including John Constantine, Zatanna, Dead Man, Swamp Thing, and Detective Chimp, as well as her deadliest enemy, Cersei, Wonder Woman must embrace a heritage she never knew she had for a battle they must win. At any cost. The future of magic in the DC Universe is rewritten in Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour, an epic adventure by New York Times best-selling writer James Tinian IV, and one of my favorite writers of all time, and artists including Jesus Marino, Emmanuel Lupacino, and Alvaro Martinez Bueno collects Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour number one, Wonder Woman number 56 and number 57, Justice League Dark number four, and Justice League Dark and Wonder Woman, The Witching Hour number one. So it's actually pretty short. So our last review was Volume 1 of the Justice League Dark Run that this is for. And I have reviewed the first, at least the first volume of this Wonder Woman run as well. I'm very behind on reviewing this Wonder Woman run and reading it, to be honest. It was a really good one, though. But yeah, so Issue 4 isn't in the Justice League Dark trade, so in that... I recommended getting Justice League Dark Volume 1 and The Witching Hour at the same time. Because if you want to read one, you're going to need the other. And the last two issues in that volume of Justice League Dark happen after The Witching Hour. So you'll want to stop, read The Witching Hour, and then go back to the Justice League Dark Volume 1 trade. Got it? Good. Okay. So... Hecate's followers branded Wonder Woman with a witch mark forever ago. And these marks are kind of storing Hecate's magic in very powerful magical people that she deems worthy and capable of handling it for the most part. It will burn out anyone who really actually uses it. Wonder Woman can handle it a little better than most because she's a demigod and incredible in every way, but uh, it will eventually burn her out too if she keeps using it. And using it also connects her to Hecate, who wants to puppeteer her. She can puppeteer her witch marked. And Wonder Woman is telling the regular Justice League about the Upside Down Man and the other kind, but uh, the other kind kind of use magic to brainwash the Justice League and make them forget about it pretty wild. Wonder Woman kind of hides the witch mark from them, too. No, the other kind don't. Uh, sorry, I misspoke. The other kind don't hypnotize the Justice League and make them forget about it. Hecate does. And then we're all set. But, you know, magic users are gathering everywhere uh, because of this horrible, horrible thing, including uh, in the bar. You know? And they try to do a ritual. Doesn't work. A lot of magic users die. A lot of magic users die. So many. But uh, Hecate, it turns out, she tried to be nicer, tried to help humans, but she's been wronged over and over and over, and she's seen the horrible things that, you know, humanity and Earth and this whole dimension uh, have done with magic. And she's like, nah... Let's just not. Let's let's just not. Let's completely destroy magic uh, and replace it with a new magic, which doesn't sound like the worst thing ever. 
you know? But a lot of people are going to die to accomplish this. A lot of people. In fact, Nanda Parbat itself is completely destroyed and replaced with something new. As is the Parliament of Trees, and Swamp Thing has to work with this new green at the end. Uh, they work with Cersei, uh, whose main motivation is just to steal a lot of Hecate's power. But Hecate is her patron. You know? So, it's a little fucked. <laughs> But I really like the characterization of Cersei in this book. It actually reminds me a lot of how she was in Justice League Unlimited. Uh, in the last review, I mentioned the episode of Justice League Unlimited where Wonder Woman gets turned into a pig and Batman and Zatanna try to save her from Cersei. <laughs> and uh, I was talking about how the characterization of Zatanna in this is a lot like that one, in a way. And the way her showmanship works is the same. And also this Cersei seems very much like that Cersei to me. So I think that's very interesting that this is a lot of Justice League Unlimited kind of feeling stuff in here. And that's one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Makes me very happy. Uh, we find out that John Constantine is dying. Uh, not from anything magical that he can stop. Homie just smoked too much. He's got cancer from smoking. That's it. You know, kind of... It's kind of ironic. You know, he survived all these horrible magical things and the thing that does him in is cigarettes. Kind of insane. But, you know, he seems less willing to fight because he knows he's going to die anyway. He, he's, he's just being Constantine, and Zaytana has to slap some... <sighs> has to slap him around like usual. You know, Black Orchid's around doing stuff. I really want to learn more about Black Orchid. Uh, the New 52 Animal Man run really made me curious about her. Uh, need to figure that out. The Sisterhood of the Sleight of Hand... You know, is there, who are characters I'm not familiar with, really. They might be new, I don't know. <laughs> Wonder Woman is trapped on the moon like her soul is, because she died, but her body is being puppeteered by Hecate. Magic users are freaking out all over the planet. There's so much happening, I really can't go down a list of every single thing. Uh, plus, it's a big event, and I want you to read it and enjoy it, because it is good, especially if you're a fan of DC's magical worlds. You know, we get a big origin for Hecate and all this stuff. And she is defeated. And as I mentioned in the last review, the heroes end up calling in the Upside Down Man and the Other Kind to stop Hecate, which gives the Other Kind a full foot into their world. So they kind of just traded one evil for another. And in my opinion, it's a far worse evil. To be honest, Hecate changing everything might not have been that bad long term, but the risks here are insane. Cersei getting so much power from Hecate. The other kind entering our dimension. I say our dimension, but, you know, their dimension. Pretty wild. Pretty effing wild. But that is it for Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour. A really cool crossover. I think it might have come kind of soon, but you don't have to buy much. If you're already reading Wonder Woman, you only have to buy three more books. If you're reading Justice League Dark, though, you have to buy four more books. But, you know, two of them are event-only books, one-shots, the opener and closer, like they did in, uh, like, Minimum Carnage and stuff, you know. And then the others are just tie-ins for this. But I feel like a lot of people reading Justice League Dark are probably reading Wonder Woman anyway. But maybe not the other way around. A lot of people reading Wonder Woman might not be reading Justice League Dark. But I feel like if you're reading Justice League Dark, you also want to follow all the characters on the team. But maybe some people just read the team books because they don't want to keep up with all the individual characters. I don't know. Um, I like to try to keep up with Wonder Woman, and I really definitely keep up with Swamp Thing. And then Zaytana usually doesn't have a solo book. Nor Detective Chimp. Or Man Bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good book, uh, spinning out of a really good Wonder Woman run and a really good Justice League Dark run. And I can't wait to review more from both. 
But that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I am still reviewing quote-unquote weird DC books. So magical characters, uh, stories that stand out as weird, and just Grant Morrison, Doom Patrol, and Swamp Thing, that kind of thing. That's it. Thank you all once again. See you all next time. Bye for now.